Amen and good morning. Please be seated and welcome to worship all of you, those of you here, those of you online, welcome to worship and the peace of Christ be with you all. And let us greet one another. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, and, and now let us gather in a moment of prayer. And sometimes when you're, we're singing a hymn, have you ever looked at sometimes there's beautiful prayers written underneath the hymns? And believe me, when I have meetings, like council meetings for the association, so often if it's my time to lead something, I grab a hymnal and I open up to a completely random spot and I look at the prayer and I pray the prayer on it because there are so many beautiful prayers in our hymnal. And, so, and I think that this prayer at the bottom of this song that we just sang is beautiful. So will you join with me in a moment of prayer? Most wonderful God, please accept the thanks of my heart for thinking of me, for loving me, for saving me. Please accept the praises of my soul for embracing me, for treasuring me, for redeeming me. Receive my joy, for you are my hope, my peace, and my light. And it is in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. And may God be with us as we begin our worship service here this morning. And now, friends, if anybody has any announcements, you can come forward at this time. And I do have a couple of announcements to share with you. And the first one is that we did have a very successful community dinner last night. We served over 110 people, which was wonderful. However, I was the one in charge of cooking. And maybe you've heard me say before, but do you know what I'm not good at? Cooking. Okay, so I'm going to tell you this. Everything was fine, but there were a couple trays where the chicken came out a little overdone because, you know, I'm not very good at it, at this whole cooking thing. Because, you know, the line, I figured out here, the line between, like, chicken that's cooked but not crispy enough and chicken that's crispy enough and chicken that's overcooked is all they're very small lines and so with all of that said everything was fine I may have lost a little bit of sleep over it but everything was fine we served over 110 people but if you are a better cook than I am which I'm gonna guess that that most of you are don't be afraid to sign up to help with the community dinner <laughs> It is not hard. It's wonderful. We all get together. We're really together hanging out. It's really nice. Uh, the earliest anybody ever comes is, is 3 p.m., unless it's like Thanksgiving or something. And the latest somebody's there is 6 p.m. And you can only come for part of that time if you want. But we could use some more volunteers. We were a little bit low on volunteers last night. And then my last uh, announcement is a sad one. And so most of you have heard this, especially if you receive our emails. Uh, but we did lose our beloved Rob Voss to the kingdom of heaven and he did pass away on monday and we are having his memorial service here in church at 10 30 tomorrow morning if you would like to go to the calling hours it's at lester wiedekind's funeral home uh, on uh, delaware in kenmore from four to eight tonight and so you can go there and then the service will be here at 10 30 a.m tomorrow morning now some of you are, have joined the church recently or are newer to this church so you might not know rob but i have to take a moment to talk about rob rob's fingerprint is is on every single thing in this church. He has literally painted every wall in this church at some point in time within the years. He has fixed probably everything in this church at some point in time over the years. If you remember, our, our uh, chancel used to be more narrow, and so we didn't have as much room for kids to really sit. And, and then when there was a wedding, it was kind of awkward because we couldn't get the bridal party in nicely. So Rob's the one who spearheaded with the trustees to expand this, and he was the one who was tearing everything up. He was the one who was here every day supervising when we did bring in the contractors. He's the one who designed this. We have two of these so that when the kids want to go back and forth, when we got rid of our normal lectern and pulpit, and we just, we wanted something more simple that we could move around, and, and a second one for if the kids want to go back and forth, Rob actually designed this. We wanted the UCC cross on it, and he wanted it to match the wood perfectly in our pews, and he did this. When we got our new sound system, it was Rob who was here every single day during the, in, the installation, and it was Rob who watched all of the YouTube videos to figure out how to make a very complicated sound system work, and Rob is behind everything, but he never wanted praises. So some people don't know all that Rob did, but he 
his fingerprints on everything in this church. And so uh, for Sandy, we love you, Sandy, and uh, we are all praying for Sandy at this time as we know that it's hard, uh, but it's also hard in this entire church because we also love Rob so very much, and it is without a doubt that we know that he is in the kingdom of God today. Good morning. Uh, this is about the Buffalo Bisons game on July 3rd. I finally got a hold of Sean Olay of the Bisons. It's $24.50 per person. I need 12 people in order to take that, have that price. He's reserving 20 to 24 peop, uh, tickets for us. Um, I'd like the money by May 21st. If you decide to go with us, you can make a check out to me, Gay Meltrutter. And I really hope you sign up and go because it really is a good time. Thank you. And now let us join our hearts and minds together as we light our peace candle and pray for peace. Holy and loving God, we light this candle, Lord, and we ask for your peace. We ask for your peace that surpasses all human understanding. We ask for your peace to be such a part of our lives that we can create more peace in this world. We ask that you help us and you lead us to be instruments of your peace in this world so everyone can know and experience your presence and your peace. And we pray this all through Christ Jesus, and together we say, Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Would you join me for the opening litany? The prophet asks, can our soul-weary bones have, live again? Oh God, you know. We ask, can we dance again after mourning, loss, and grief? Oh God, you know. The gift is sure and unmistakable. Let us celebrate the gift of God's new life.
reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the 11th chapter. And we have been in the Gospel of John lately as we follow along with the lectionary. And the Gospel of John, as you've learned, is uh, John's quite lengthy in his writing. So I did take out a few of the verses, and uh, we will still read many of the verses. We will read John chapter 11, verses 1 through 27. Then we're going to jump to verse 38 and read till 44. Uh, But this is a very important story. This is the story about Jesus' best friend named Lazarus and Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. It's an important story that we need to hear today. And uh, so we are going to read from John chapter 11. If you are ready to hear the word of the Lord, will you please say amen? Amen. Starting with verse 1. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, but rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. And then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews, meaning the Jewish leadership, they were all Jewish, the Jewish leadership, was just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? And Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world, but those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. Now the disciples said to him, Lord, if he is falling asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring to merely sleep. And then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe me. But let us go to him. And Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go also, that we may die with him. And when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed home. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And we're going to jump down to verse 38. And then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to Jesus, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him. And let him go. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, choir. And let us join in a moment of prayer. Holy and loving God, we thank you and we praise you and we ask that you can pour your Holy Spirit upon us as we gather here today. Bless us with your power. Bless us with your faithful assurance. Bless us, Lord, with your promises. Let us feel and understand the message of your gospel. And Lord, we pray this in every prayer through Christ Jesus and together we say, Amen. Amen. When Jesus had heard that his best friend Lazarus was sick, he did something that everyone thought was peculiar. He waited for two days. He waited for two whole days before he journeyed back to the area of Bethany where Lazarus and Mary and Martha were all from until he traveled back to the town that's just outside of Jerusalem. And by the time that Jesus returned, to Bethany by the time that Jesus made it to the home of his best friends of Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Lazarus had already died and Mary and Martha, they came to Jesus, two of them on separate occasions, they came to Jesus and they said to Jesus, Jesus, if you had come sooner, if you had come earlier, our brother would not have died. If you had come sooner, then Lazarus would not have died because you would have healed him and, and he would not have died because they knew that Jesus had the power to save and they knew that that miraculous power could have saved their brother from his death. But Jesus did wait. He waited for two days before journeying back to Bethany and while he waited, his best friend died. Now here is what I wonder. I wonder if Lazarus knew about this plan because Jesus seemed to be very intentional about this. So I wonder if Lazarus, who was the best friend of Jesus, may have known that Jesus was going to let him die so that Jesus could raise him from the dead. I'm not sure, but I just wonder if somehow Lazarus knew that Jesus was going to do this. And I wonder this because Jesus raising somebody from the dead is the tipping point for the religion. Religious elite. That's the tipping point that sets them over the edge. At this point, the leaders are already getting very frustrated with Jesus. They're frustrated with his rising popularity. They're frustrated with everybody turning to Jesus instead of turning to him. They are already frustrated with Jesus. But when Jesus raises somebody from the dead, that's the tipping point for the religious elite. And it's after Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead that they hit that tipping point and suddenly the religious elite begin to plot to kill Jesus. And Jesus knew that that would be the tipping point. He was fully aware of this. Jesus knew that raising someone from the dead, especially a respected man like Lazarus, Jesus knew that that would be the tipping point. Because could you possibly know that somebody was risen from the dead, that somebody had been buried in a tomb for how long? For four days. And that they rose from the dead. Could you possibly see that somebody had been dead and then that Jesus brought them to life and not believe that Jesus was the Messiah? And so, of course, the moment that Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, the moment that Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb, everyone believed that Jesus was the Messiah. People began swarming to Bethany because they wanted to know more because this was something that was undeniable. So it's at that point that the religious elite... That the, uh, realize that the only way that they can silence Jesus, at least what they think, they think that the only way that they can silence Jesus is to plan his death. And so Jesus uses his best friend as an example of the power that Jesus has over death. Even though Jesus knew that this would be that tipping point, Jesus uses his best friend as an example that death is not greater than the power of Jesus. Jesus uses this example to teach that death cannot contain the power of God. Jesus uses his best friend as an example to teach all of us that death, even though, yes, we think it is the most final thing ever, that death is not as 
final as we think it is. And Jesus proves this point by raising Lazarus from the dead. My commentary best friend lately, you know, I've, I've had this commentary best friend lately. If you come to Tuesday Bible study, you know this uh, also, but also here, my uh, commentary best friend, I'm calling him my new BFF. I can't wait to meet him in the kingdom of heaven. Reverend Dr. William Barclay, he actually says this beautifully. I'm going to read you this quote. I know you can't see this from there. He says, when we believe in Jesus, in truth, we are resurrected, for we are freed from the fear which is characteristic of the godless life. We are freed from the frustration which is characteristic of the sin-ridden life. We are freed from the futility of the Christless life. Life is raised from sin's death and becomes so rich that it cannot die, but must find in death only the transition to a higher life. That is William Barclay's fancy way of saying that our faith releases us from the grasp of death and sets us free for where? The kingdom of heaven. Sets us free for the kingdom of heaven. Of course, we're not, I don't think we're going to have the same bodily resurrection when we die right away as Lazarus did. Lazarus was an example. Lazarus was the example that Jesus used because sometimes we have to see things in order to believe them. And Jesus wanted everybody who was there to actually have a chance to see and believe. So that's why Jesus was resurrected in the, in the bodily form. But the rest of us, we will be set free in the kingdom of heaven. When these temporary lives of ours come to an end, and in the kingdom of heaven, do you know what's great? Cancer can't enter the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, sickness cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, sorrow cannot enter. In the kingdom of heaven, there is no sickness or sorrow or pain or death. All of that is passed in the kingdom of heaven. And Lazarus was raised in bodily form so that Jesus could show us the power he has over death. Now, I was listening to a podcast the other day. I listen to a lot of podcasts lately. I go through phases. And I was listening to a podcast lately where two therapists are talking to one another. And these ter therapists were talking about the subject of grief. And I don't know that either of these therapists are necessarily religious. They at least don't say that they are. But what these two therapists have realized is that when they are working with people who are struggling with grief, when they're working with people who are making their way through grief, it is easiest for people who have faith to find hope even as they grieve. Because all of us grieve. All of us are going to lose loved ones. All of us will grieve in this life. And yet people of faith have a way of finding hope and holding on to that hope even as we grieve. And the reality is that we as a church are grieving right now. We know that Rob is in the kingdom of heaven, but we are grieving when somebody is such a big part of our church life, we can't help but grieve. And so as a community... As a church community, we are all grieving right now. And yet, Rob and, and all others who we memorialize in this church have such strong faith and they live out their faith. You know what it means to live out your faith? It's not just that we say we follow Jesus, but we live like we're following Jesus. We live with love because we're following Jesus. We live with service because we're following Jesus. All of the people, especially Rob, who we memorialize in this church have faith that is so strong that we know that that death is not and cannot be the end for them. We know that death is not the end. We can feel that death is not the end. And Jesus proves to us that death is not the end when he raises Lazarus from the dead. Of course, grief is still hard. Grief is not a place anybody wants to live. Grief is still hard. It was hard for Jesus. Do you actually know that in those verses that we skipped over, Jesus wept. Jesus wept outside the tomb for Lazarus. Grief is still hard. And yet, when we have faith, we know that death 
is not the end because grief and death do not get the final word, but death uh, is not the end because Jesus gets the final word and Jesus is standing in the kingdom of heaven with his arms wide opening, welcoming those who have gone before us into the kingdom of heaven. And when we make our way through this earth and when these temporary bodies that we have, when these temporary bodies fail to serve us anymore and when it's our time to enter the kingdom of heaven, you know what we're going to see in the kingdom of heaven? We're going to see our loved ones, but we are going to be greeted by Jesus with his arms wide open, welcoming to us and saying, just like he said to Lazarus, get up and come into this heavenly kingdom. Get up and welcome. Friends, I tell you all this because I hope and I pray that every single person who is gathered here today understands what we've just read and understands that the message that we have tells us that death is not the end. Death is not the end because when we have faith, and I just wish I could share this faith so contagiously with every single person, but our faith shows us that when our lives come to an end, we get to rejoice in the kingdom of heaven. This Jesus who we read about, he's not just some fictional character. This Jesus who we read about, he lives within us. And his spirit lives within us. In the same way that Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. We're not even talking about him raising himself from the dead yet. We're not even there yet. That's two weeks from now. But when we think about him raising Lazarus from the dead, that is him showing us that he has power over death. And I want every single person here to know this because grief is heavy and grief is hard and we know that, but death doesn't get the final word. Grief doesn't have the final say, but instead Jesus gets the final say. And it's Jesus that gives us that hope. Hold on to that hope, will you, friends? Hold on to that hope. Know that these stories that we're reading, they're not just stories. Hold on to that hope. Whew. And it will help you through even the most trying times. And let's join in a moment of prayer. Holy and loving God, this world can be trying. This world can be so hard. In this world, we have to lose those to your kingdom, but still we have to lose those whom we love. And Lord, it can be so difficult and so challenging for us. But we hold on to our faith in you. We hold on to your promises. We hold on to the promise that you have opened up the gates of heaven and that you are standing there ready to welcome us in. Lord, we ask that you pour your Holy Spirit upon us as we gather here and that you give us faith, a contagious faith, to show us that death is not the end. And we pray this in every prayer through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And during the season of Lent, we say sins instead of deaths. We pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue our worship this morning with our tithes and offerings.
let us pray together. Gracious God, may this act of giving transform our hearts and our minds. May you bless these gifts and use them to do your will. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Now go forth with the blessing of God. Go forth with the faith of Christ Jesus. Go forth, be blessed, and be a blessing to all.